Have you ever been afraid? Have you ever wondered, how do I overcome this fear and anxiety that I'm feeling? Well, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, the Bible tells us it is possible to be fearless. My name is Chris Cassis, and I'm the pastor of the Source Church, and today we're going to talk about how to overcome our fears and anxieties if you're a Christian, if you're a follower of Jesus. So open up your Bibles. We're going to be in the story of John chapter 6, verses 15 through 21. And I got my Bible here, and I will read it to you. It's, it's a story that seems like it's plugged in between the feeding of the 5,000 and what Jesus is doing when he's talking about who he is, that he's the bread of life. It's a, it's a small little snippet that John includes in there, but I think we can find three points. Three points on how to overcome fear and overcome anxiety if we're Christians. The Bible tells us, and let me read you the story first, but then we'll jump into those three points. John chapter 6, verse 16, it says, When evening came, his disciples went down to the lake, where they got into a boat and set off across the lake for Capernaum. By now it was dark and Jesus had not yet joined them. A strong wind was blowing and the waters grew rough. When they had rowed three or three or three and a half miles, they saw Jesus approaching the boat, walking on the water, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I. Don't be afraid. Then they were willing to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the shore where they were heading. Now again, this seems like a small little snippet story. Like, why did John even throw it in there? And I think John is trying to explain to his audience exactly who Jesus is. But we can see a couple things from this. First of all, they were terrified. Fear is a natural reaction to things. And I'm preaching right now through a, a message series called Fearless. And although I believe it's impossible to be completely fearless, like not have fear at all, that's not what I'm saying. It is possible to have less fear. It is possible to fear less. It is possible to have courage in situations. And these three points will be, help you, hopefully, to have less fear, to have less anxiety, to know what to do with your worry if you're a follower in Jesus. But the first thing we have to address is we do have fear. In fact, Jesus tells us, Jesus tells us later on in John chapter 16, verse 33, this is what he says. He says, in this life, he says, I've told you these things so that you may have peace in this world, in this life, you will have trouble but take heart, I have overcome the world. I've come to overcome the world. That's what he's saying. See, it's possible to have less fear, to have courage, to take heart. But he says, there are going to be problems. There are going to be troubles. And so there's natural feelings that we have as human beings where we're going to develop fear. Past experience develops fear for us future projections develop fear for us. We're going to have anxieties. We're going to have worries. But as believers in Christ, what is our proper response? How are we supposed to respond? And we find three different points here. And so I just want to point these out to you. Number one, God hears our prayers. God hears our prayers. God hears our cries. You see, in this particular passage of John, it seems like his disciples are in a boat and Jesus just held back. But Jesus is actually trying to teach his disciples something. If you go to the Gospel of Mark and the Gospel of Matthew and you compare the stories, you get a little more details. Now, what are these details? See, the Gospels don't contradict each other. The Gospels build upon each other. I talked about this the other day in a, in a video where we did a devotion and I said the four Gospels and how are they different from each other and do they contradict? And so if you want to go back, you can always watch that. But we talked specifically about how each story is a different eyewitness account and they build upon each other. And so here, John is just trying to explain 
how Jesus says you don't have to be afraid and here's why you don't have to be afraid, but there's more to the story. If you go to Matthew 14, you'll actually see that Jesus, after he feeds the 5,000, it says in John that the disciples just go down into the boat, but in Matthew, Matthew actually makes the point that Jesus sent them away into the boat. It says immediately in verse 22, Matthew 14, verse 22, and you can look it up to verify, but it says immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. And so Jesus, being Jesus, knew that there was going to be a storm. Jesus knew what was going to happen. And ultimately, he sent the disciples into the storm. You see, we're going to have problems in this life. We're going to have troubles. We're going to have storms, Jesus says. And so our natural response is going to be to be afraid or to have fear. But he says it's possible to be fearless. In Mark, we see with what's happening is the disciples begin to row. The disciples are trying to row out of this storm. Let me read it to you from from Mark and give you a little bit more details, a little more perception to what is happening. It says, Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to Bethsaida while he dismissed the crowd. After leaving them, he went up on a mountainside to pray. So Jesus is praying while his disciples are down there on the this lake rowing this boat to the other side. Later that night, the boat was in the middle of the lake and he was alone on the land. He saw the disciples straining at the oars because the wind was against them. So he saw them straining. They were trying to row back to shore. And it actually gives the detail that this is like the fourth watch. And so the way that they counted time back then was first watch, second watch, third watch. This is probably about the ninth hour. They've been rowing for nine hours hours on the lake. Jesus has been watching them strain for nine hours. They've been doing everything in their power and in their strength in order to get back to shore. But the wind was too strong. The waves were too strong. They're exhausted at the oars. They're tired. And so they're a little bit fearful of what's going to happen. This is a storm that can swift the boat, that can pull it over. And they are fighting with everything they have to get back but they cannot do it in their own strength. Jesus hears their cries. He hears them calling out for help. And he decides to go down. He says, okay, they've strained hard enough. You see, Jesus is trying to teach us a lesson that we can't do things in our own strength. That you can try to do everything on your own. You can try in your own power, but you will ultimately come up short every day. Time. You will be in the middle of a lake, rowing against the wind, rowing against the waves. You can fight against life, but it's just going to make you tired and beat you down. But the first thing we learn is that God hears our cries. Jesus sees the disciples. He's trying to teach them a lesson. He's letting them do it in their own strength, but then he comes to them and he he's, meets them where they're at. They are exhausted and tired and they're praying and crying out to God and God hears their cries. I think about it in like the book of Exodus where the people are in Egypt and they're in slavery and they cry out to God and it says, when God speaks to Moses, I have heard the cries of my people. You see, God hears our prayers. And so the first thing we need to do is we need to cry out to God. The first thing we need to do is we need to admit that we cannot do it in our own strength. We cannot do it by ourselves. We cannot do it alone. And we can't even do it with the community of others without Jesus. We need God and we need to cry out to him. So the very first thing that we learn from here is that God hears our cries. Number two, what we see from this story is that Jesus ultimately is in charge of his creation. This is why he tells them, In John chapter 6, he says, you don't have to be afraid. You see, this is the reason why Christians don't have to fear. This is how believers, followers of Jesus, overcome their fears and anxieties. He tells us that we don't have to be afraid. Look at what it says here. It says, it is I, don't be afraid. Then they were willing to take him into the boat and immediately the boat reached the shore where they were heading. You see, when we know who's in the boat, when our God is bigger than our problems, when we realize that Jesus is in charge of everything, even creation, we don't have to be afraid. 
It's, it's like a child who's fearful to walk into a dark room, but if they're holding on to their parent's hand, now they suddenly have courage. I, I don't know about you, but I, I have a, a small little, um, or we used to have a small little chihuahua, now we have a small little Pomeranian, and, and this, this dog loves to uh, be fearful when other large dogs come around. It, it shivers, it, it coils up into a ball, it's scared because it sees the size of a bigger dog, but you pick that dog up in your arms, and you know what happens? It starts to yip, it starts to yap, it drives me nuts. It's like, listen, do you see the size? Do you see the size of that other animal there? Do you see the size of, of that? That's a Rottweiler. It will tear you apart, but if you're holding it in your arms, it has all the courage in the world. Yip, yap, it's sitting there barking, and that's what Jesus is trying to teach his disciples. That if I'm in your boat, you don't have to fear. You see, he wants to show them that he's in charge of even creation. He's in charge of every single circumstance. He's in charge of every single problem. He has the solution. He has the answer. And we see here, just in this small little passage, that Jesus shows us six different miracles. Let me point them out to you. Six different miracles. If you look at the book of Matthew, and again, this is the Gospels building on each other, John leaves this part of the story out, that this is actually where Jesus walks on water. Jesus sees his disciples struggling, and he comes down off the mountain from praying, and he walks out on the water, and they say, it's a ghost, and they're terrified. And then Jesus says, it is I. And Peter says, if it's really you, Jesus, tell me to come. And Jesus, being the short answer he is, he says, Peter, come. Come on over. Peter gets out of the boat, and he begins to walk on water. And this is part of the story, you've probably heard it before, where Peter's walking toward Jesus, he's walking on water, and then the waves uh, start to pick up, the wind starts to blow, and Peter takes his eyes off of Jesus and puts it on the wind, he puts it on the waves, and he begins to sink. And he cries out to Jesus, Jesus, help, again. God hears our cries. And Jesus reaches over, and he pulls Peter back up, and they both get into the boat together, and he says, Peter, why did you doubt you of little faith? You see, there's six different miracles that happen here. Number one, Jesus walks on water. He walks on water in the middle of a storm. Now that defies buoyancy, it defies gravity, it defies all of Earth's properties. But that's exactly the point that the authors are trying to make, that Jesus can even walk on water. He can defy the Earth's properties when it comes to creation. He can walk on water. Number two, we see that Peter walks on water. Not only does Jesus walk on water, but Peter also walks on water. And then Jesus ultimately saves Peter. He pulls him out when Peter cries up to him. He pulls him out and places him on the water. So now he's sitting there on the edge of the water. We also see that Jesus then stops the wind and he says, wind, be calm. And everything is calm. He says, waves, be calm. That's miracle number five. And the waves were calm. Everything settled down. It was peaceful. And then Jesus teleports. It's like he snaps his finger and immediately they go to the other side of the lake. Jesus is trying to show exactly who he is. And so number one, he walks on water. Two, Peter walks on water. Three, Jesus saves Peter by placing him on the water. Number four, Jesus stops the wind. Number five, he stops the waves. Number six, he teleports them to the other side. Six different miracles that Jesus shows that he is in control of all of creation. And so number one, God hears our prayers. Number two, Jesus is in control. God is in control of every single situation. In fact, open up your Bibles to Colossians 1, verses 15 through 17. I'm going to look it up for you really quick. But we're going to read Colossians 1, 15 through 17. And, and here's actually what it says with Jesus being in charge of creation. It says, The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all of creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and visible and in invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things and in him all things hold together. You see, Jesus is in charge of all things. 
All things were created through him and for him, and he can defy every single property here on earth because he is the creator. So that's what he's trying to teach his disciples. Listen, I heard you when you were in trouble. Number two, I have the power and authority to do all things. But then number three, the point that John is really trying to make, this is how to overcome fear and anxiety. This is how if we're believers, we are not called to live in fear, we are called to live in faith, is we aren't alone. Number three is you aren't alone. Jesus is in your boat. Jesus is with you. And when you know who's with you, when you know who's with you that's in control, when you know who's with you that can handle the situation, when you know who's with you who can problem solve it, you don't have to be afraid. It's like a child who comes up short. They come to the cash register and they don't have enough money to pay. But then they look up at mom and dad and they know inside mom and dad's purse, they can just put the money down. They can just put the card down. They can just swipe it. They have the solution to the problem. You see, when you do it in your own strength, you come up short every time. But if you know that your father is in control and you know your father has the power and the authority to handle every single situation, maybe he puts you in that situation because he's trying to teach you something. Maybe you put yourself in that situation and he can get you out of it. Regardless of how you got into the situation, whether he allowed it, whether he put you in it, or whether you put yourself in it, he has the solution. And as long as he is with you, you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be terrified. You don't have to be worried. I wanna read to you a couple passages that just shows that God is with us. I mean, that's really what he tells them. in John chapter six, I mean, look at where he says, it is I, don't be afraid. Then they were willing to take him into the boat. As long as Jesus is in the boat, then they don't have to be afraid because he can calm the wind, he can calm the waves, he can calm the storm, he can give you peace. And he promises to be with us. That's why we don't have to be afraid. Joshua chapter one, verse nine, here's what it says. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous, he says. You see, there's gonna be times you're fearful, but the opposite of fear is courage. And he says, be strong and courageous. Well, how can I be strong and courageous? He says, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. As long as God is with you, you don't have to fear. You don't have to be afraid. As believers in Jesus, we can have courage. In fact, we're called to have courage. We're called to have faith and believe in Jesus and to believe in his authority, believe in his power, and that he will give us the solutions to our problems, that he is with us even through our storms. He is with us even through our problems. Now, the rest of the world, they can be afraid. The rest of the world, they can have fear. But as believers in Jesus, we are called not to have fear. Deuteronomy 31 verse 8, I'm sorry, 31 verse 6 says this, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you, and he will never forsake you. And then when the disciples were scared, right before Jesus sent them into the world with the good news, the gospel message to share with all people, it says they were terrified. They were terrified because Jesus had died and he had resurrected. They thought they were seeing ghosts. They didn't know what to, to describe it as. And Jesus comes to them and he says this. He says, then Jesus came to them. He says, all authority and power has been given to me in heaven and on earth. See, that's what Colossians 1 said. All authority and power has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teaching them everything that I've commanded you. And I am surely with you to the very end of the age. So it is possible for believers to have courage. It is possible to overcome our fears if you cry out to God and have a relationship with him, if you believe and have faith that he is in control of all things and that he is with you even in this situation, it will produce courage in your life and it will help you get over whatever problem you're facing, whatever circumstance, whatever situation, whatever fear, anxiety, or worry that continues to keep you up at night and continues to get you up early in the morning. You can have peace when you know Jesus is in your boat. You can have peace when you know God is with you. Let me pray for you. Father God, we come before you today and I wanna pray for the person 
who's going through something right now, who has a situation or a circumstance and they feel like they're alone, they feel like they are being beat down by the world and they are rowing against it and they feel absolutely alone and they're doing it in their own strength and they are tired, they are exhausted, they feel overwhelmed with family issues, they feel overwhelmed with house chores, they feel overwhelmed with projects, they feel overwhelmed at work, whatever it is they're feeling overwhelmed with right now, I pray that they realize you are with them, that we are not alone, that you are here and that you are present and that you will give us peace if we cry out to you, if we come to you in prayer, if we come to you searching for you, you see us and you see what we're going through and you see our struggles and you will meet us exactly where we're at. You will climb into our situation the same way you climbed into the boat, that you will meet us and tell us you don't have to be afraid because I have this. You don't have to be scared because I'm in control. I have authority and I am with you. In your power, Jesus, give us faith and give us courage not to be afraid to continue to follow you and continue to believe that you will handle whatever situation that we're going through right now, Lord. Give us courage and give us faith. Help us to overcome the fears in your strength, in your power. In Jesus' name I pray. And God's people said, amen. Hey, listen, if this spoke to you, I pray again that you share it. If you're not on our YouTube page yet, go to our YouTube page, YouTube forward slash Chris Cassis, and subscribe. That way you get these notifications when we go live every single day when we do these devotions. You get the notification. And if you want them emailed to you with all the scriptures and reflection questions, then all you have to do is give me your email address. Click on the link in one of the comments, and all you do is have to subscribe, and you'll get that email every single time one of these videos to come out. It comes with the video, the scriptures, the reflection questions for you. But at the same time, subscribe, share it, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. We'll continue doing these devotions as we go work through the Gospel of John. Love you guys. Till next time.